Greetings and salutations, viewer. It's I, Eric J. Chucky, with the second episode of us playing Final Fantasy VI. These episodes have no set length, by the way. I'm going to play for as long as I feel like playing when I sit down to play the game, and uh, that is that. Um, in case you're just joining us, uh, well, actually, the opposite of in case you're just joining us. Uh, I, I think I've tweaked some of the audio issues from the last episode, and I'm going to speak up and project and enunciate like I was taught in theater class and not mumble like a hobo. So, let's head up to Mount Colts and do that shit. Uh, full disclosure, while I was doing like testing um, for the audio setup to make sure everything was still working, I got in a teeny little fight and Edgar leveled up, but um, nothing else really happened. I also fixed my window a little brighter. Gotta love the fucking, you know, vaporwave style there. That's what Final Fantasy VI was meant for, honestly. Serpius. They're birdies. They look redder than they used to. Like pinker, even. They dig the vaporwave. That's what's going on here. I can't just be sitting around looking at my menu. These fuckers keep attacking me. Because I set it up that way. Of course you couldn't steal. Luck. Should I do this too from now? No, of course. Good. Glad you're here. Thanks for coming to the party. Okay, good. Great. Fantastic. <sighs> now we got some experience. I wonder if this patch, like, brightened up some of the graphics some. Maybe not. Did you guys notice that shadow in the upper right? Not shadow, but like a shadow. Uh, you, okay. More serpiasuses. Oh, did I buy those pendants? I don't think I did. We'll check. I can't remember. I, I'm level with y'all. I, I recorded this like, I don't know, an hour after I recorded the last one. Uh, we're going to wait to put it up because, I don't know, it's, it's content, YouTube, something like that. But, um, let's cure people. You look like you could use some Kieran. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't remember most of what I did. I was just so excited to be playing, to be surfing these menus, and my god, Locke. Let's talk about Locke. Let's talk about Locke for a second. He's a popular character. He's, he's the character in Final Fantasy VI. Thank you for fucking steal. Who... You either love him or you hate him. And I've been on both sides of the fence in my life. Um, I really liked Locke when I was a kid. When I first, a couple times I played this game. Probably the first five times I beat it. Then I got to be an edgy teenager and I was like, Bleh, Locke is lame. <laughs> um, because that's how I and all teenagers talked. Uh, yeah, there's some stuff about his story elements we'll talk about later that are kind of weird. Uh... But mostly, oh man, gauche, is that what they call it? That's cool. Or gauche? Or gauchy? Look at that damage increase. I believe only Locke can wield that. Actually, there's a cool way to tell it. I will show you. That's what I'm here for. It's what we're doing. Main, okay. Short dagger that sometimes parries enemies' attacks. So, we double click on it. Uh, it can be used by Locke. Cool. And then it'll show us all the abilities here, uh, what things it applies for, which includes runic, whatever that is, and two-hand, um, that means you can use a gauntlet, I believe, and still use a weapon. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and equip that unlock. We have nothing to lose here. Nice, look at that speed up. Maybe we'll get some better steals off. I believe speed is the stat that's attached to that. Um, anyway, lock doesn't really have... Like, stealing is nice, and you can get some really good weapons and, and items in the game. In fact, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of stealing from... Yes, Zagreb, right here. Uh, y'all just defend and steal. I'm gonna sit here for a minute. I might even row, so it's not even... We might do that while we're waiting. Row. See, they just scooch back. And Locke's gonna keep stealing. You guys a little shield. Scooch back. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, it was, you know, it was me being an eggy boy. Largely, you know, Locke was popular, people liked him. So I had to do whatever wasn't popular because that would make me cool. I think was the subconscious logic there. I cannot say for sure.
But uh, right now, I'm mostly frustrated with the little fucker because he won't steal anything. It is his one job. He's parrying shit. That was that main Goshen action. Gauch? Gauchy? I'll shock. Probably should heal Edgar here in a second, but... Man, I can't hit the fucker. I'll give him that. Jesus. See, I refuse to grind because it gets boring and tedious for you guys. We're going to sit here and steal from these motherfuckers. Uh, the heal spells work the same way that the damage spells do. If you do them against everyone in your party, they're going to be a lot less effective than if you do them against one person. So sometimes a targeted heal is better than, you know, healing everyone. Which, it's a little hard to tell in this game because of how information is displayed. But, uh, you know, if you have kind of an awareness of your party's max hit points, you know, approximately, it's a little... Oh my god! It's just good to be aware of that stuff, you know, it was the kind of stuff that you kind of had to remember and, and, and know about back in the day. <sighs> you know it would be great for Locke to know about? Fucking steal! You get three more tries, kid. <laughs> it's, it's not that worth it for me to look like a smart boy. But this is the point, really. This is why I get frustrated with Locke's uh, inherent ability. Because he doesn't get anything later that anybody else doesn't get. Um, the only improvement he has is he gets a uh, relic later that you can use to... Um, I think it was called Capture in the original uh, translation. And in this translation, it's probably going to be Mug. Because that's what they went with in later games and uh, versions of this game, I believe. Um, where he gets to steal and attack at the same time. He does damage, you know, so it's not just trying to take crap. Oh, no, you don't want to defend. You're supposed to be grabbing stuff. Is that attempt two? Whew. But, uh, yeah, it's great to take things that aren't yours and use them to your advantage, but if you spend all this time trying to take, fuck it. Like, it's not, this game is not difficult enough that I need to be doing this. Of course, we're in the back row, so our attack's going to suck. Um, so keep stealing, what the fuck? Maybe, maybe you'll be inspired by our violence. Tara's going to drop a cure on herself. Oh, good timing, too, thank you. God, I love the animations. But just these characters. I love how, after I've given them a command, you notice they get into like a little ready position. Uh, let's go ahead and cure Locke, too, not that he's done what he's fucking supposed to do. There you go. Of course not. But yeah, they get in little ready positions. Like, watch, we'll hit attack. And Terra, bam! She's gonna fight in a second. Steal, huh. Lock is, gets ready to do fuck all. To jump gently at the enemy and then jump away. Uh, but a lot of this playthrough as well, for me, is gonna be, you know, trying to see how I feel about Locke's character as an adult. Um, mechanically, he can still get fucked, but uh, from a character standpoint is what I'm curious about. We're looking at some extra treasures here. We just gonna fight these guys. Uh, I am not concerned with getting the steel. See how much more damage we're doing there? I'm gonna keep saying that because I have no short-term memory. Locke can't steal and I can't think, so, uh, you know, we've all got our faults. See how much faster that fight was. It's mechanics! It's a depth to the game! It's not necessary, but it is there, and I think it's cool. Let's use a potion, because we've got 27 of them, because sometimes Locke can steal. Also, I bought a fuck ton. We're getting up there in levels. Like I said, by the end of this zone, I like to be level 16. I feel like that's a really strong level. Uh, usually I don't have to grind to get there. Gigas Glove. That sounds like a relic. 
Hell yeah, Glove of a Mighty Gigas boosts the wearer's physical attack. Um, yeah, let's give that to Terra. Because she's not as strong as Edgar. And, uh... Do we light up when we go into that light? Let's find out. We do. Look at that. They didn't need to do that. That doesn't mean anything. Nothing's going on there, but we're... We get exposed to the light that's coming through the ceiling of the cave. It's so fucking cool. Um, man, I'm so rambly tonight. I'm just so hopped up on Final Fantasy juice. And steel. Yeah, punch him. He deserves it. 80 damage. That's a pretty decent improvement. We should probably check and see what it's actually doing to her attack power. Let's give you another chance, Lock. We'll give you another chance to steal. Look, you blocked your little attack. That's nice. God damn it. Nice critical hit. Fuck yeah. <coughs> uh, relic. Remove. Let's put her stats. Vigor 31, attack 66, I think that's all we're really worried about. Relic Gigas Glove. Uh, Vigor 31, attack 66, so I don't know how it applies. Yeah, whatever, we'll figure it out. I forget where all of the passages are here, maybe I don't. Now I'm trying not to sprint shoes, let's, let's enjoy the scenery. Look at this cave. Oh, look at the detail, look how it disappears down into the abyss. Like. My god. I just love the color palette of this game. There's that shadowy figure again. I don't know who that fucking guy is. I want to know why he's leading us on a merry chase through the mountain. Trillions. Now these things can get fucked. I believe we steal antidotes from them. Oh, a potion. Okay. I'm sure the steal rate on those karate dudes is higher. Uh, well, lower. Um, it's more difficult, I will say. Because they've got a really good piece of gear. Um, or maybe Locke's just incompetent and got lucky just now. Uh, Trilliums are weird plant monsters here, and they're actually, I believe, a kind of flower. Uh, they're a little hard to see, but they're just kind of a squiggly of a plant. And do we go around here? We'll go up in there. I don't remember. More Trilliums. Oh man, fucking bad touch. This is what I wanted the star pendants for. If you guys hear poison. Which can be a real pain in the ass. Um, man, poison stat is so cute. You get all purple. You have the, the wooglies in front of your head. That's, you know, that. It's cool. I, I just love what it looks like. I love the graphics. We do have some antidotes. We have stolen some of those. So let's use one of those. There we go. She's a sorceress again, and not a bottle of something. Berlinmeyer flask of delicious juice. Need some potions. Cool, cool. Let's go into this cave here. Yes, we do want to go down here. Because... It's a tent. Oh, Gorgias, was that what he was called? Side attack. So, this is the opposite of a pincer attack. Also new to this game, we have the full advantage. We are the pincers now. Uh, I am not going to use her MP on this, just in case we need it. Let's... <sighs> you know what, let's just fight. These guys do a lot of damage. I'm going to auto crossbow. Let's just finish this fight. Man, look how much more damage lock deals. Good god. Uh, there's a reason you don't really want to grind in this game, and it's nothing I've ever really paid attention to. Later on, you get items um, that help you increase your stats on level up. Uh, I, when I was a kid, I didn't really pay attention to what stats I was getting. Even in my um, early 20s when I played this on Game Boy Advance, uh, I didn't really, you know, I just... I used the items for different reasons. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you know what I'm talking about, and you will eventually if you don't. Um, 
But I, I didn't make any planning toward like, you know, I want to get Locke more speed, I want to get Terra more magic or whatever. Um, but I might do that this run. Uh, I, don't, I, think I, I don't think I want to grind it out, I'm going to be too overly concerned with it, but I think it'll be neat to just tweak the characters my way. You know, it's as I said before, I love character creation, I love customization. Obviously, I've, you know, I've got the sick-ass Vaporwave uh, motif, and one of the things I love about uh, Final Fantasy VI is what you can customize. Let's talk dungeons also. Uh, you've noticed I've gone off on a lot of different little paths here. This is what I love about old JRPG dungeons that I don't think a lot of current games do as well because 3D is more confusing. Is if you go off the beaten path, <coughs> you're bound to, bound to find something. Um, these guys aren't as terrible, so we'll just find give Locke a chance to try and steal something. Maybe he'll run off with a potion. Uh, so, like, you know, there's always that fun chance. There's always that, um, you know, several different directions you can go. Eh, you stole an antidote. Good on you. Uh, and you go, hmm, okay, is this going to take the story forward? Oh, I'm going to talk to that NPC. Is, is that where I'm going next? Um, and can I go the other way and get more treasure? Do I want to move on now and save my resources, or do I want to risk that and see if I can find something really good in the treasure box. <clears throat> I feel like Final Fantasy VI, out of all of the Final Fantasies, does it best. Um, seven's pretty close. Uh, four and five aren't bad, but they were way more... Uh, let's use some Cure Magic. Um, they were way more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Linear, uh, if I didn't already say that. The maps here, you know, they, they're they organic looking in most places. Whereas in other Final Fantasy games, they were, tended to be square or, you know, made of corridors. And they did their best. I mean, you know, technology was a little different. The limitations were the same, but... One of the things about releasing games late in the system's life, I mean, this is 1994, the N64 came out in, what, 95, 96? Um, the thing about releasing games late in the console's life is you you know how to push it, you know how to make the, the system do some crazy shit, and little tricks to get around limitations and stuff like that. So, you can get away with, like, making your graphics look like they do to, uh, make mountains really organic. I mean, at the end of the day, these are all just individual 32 by 32 blocks that are repeated um, for the most part over and over again. Some of the mountainside stuff, maybe the bridge and such. I mean, they're still all little 32 by 32 blocks, but uh, <clears throat> there's not like curves I can go around. The space is, space is either passable or it isn't. Um, but they've made it look like, you know, I'm on a mountain. And the sprites are so well integrated with it that it just, it just all looks really great. Like this scene here, all right, this little place, this little save point. And let's let's change our front character. Let's change to Locke because who knows how much he's going to be in my party. Um, get a tent on there. Oh, it was still Edgar. Well, because I didn't back out first. Derp. Well, I don't want to look at Locke's greasy ass. So next time we use a tent, we'll use Locke save. Um, <clears throat> level 10, level 10, level 9. That's not bad. We are exactly six levels off from what I usually like to be here, but I have faith in us that we will manage to get through that much issue. This is a hard little run to the boss. But, um, that little area where you, you use your tent, you're at the save point, you relax. Um, I spent a lot of time there. I spent a lot of time there after grinding up and you know, getting my ass kicked at this next boss, and I have a lot of memories of that place. <clears throat> In part from playing this game so many times, you know, so I, I spent more time at the beginning than I did at the end. You know, you start up a game a bunch, you don't necessarily finish it every time. Sometimes I just sit there, sometimes I just turn this game on and listen to the music. You know, back in the day before internet access was easy even before I started well so I would get mp3 not mp3s <laughs> we're talking about way before that um 
I would get MIDI files and I would uh, play them. And I loved all the different instruments and the styles that people used to, you know, translate the songs from these games into the MIDI. The M-I-D-I is the file format name. I've always said MIDI's. Well, actually, I think for a long time I said M-I-D-I. Um, there, there's a fun little secret story. You know, the old uh, GIF, GIF Wars, JPEGs. Oh, a remedy. Nice steal. Um, some creatures have uh, more than one item that they might get stolen. Uh, where one is like a common steal and the, the other ones are rarer. So if you get a really good, like a crit, essentially, on your steal, you'll get a better item on some creatures. Um, yeah, I didn't always... I used to say, uh, like, JPEG, GIF, uh, BMP. Um, you know, I'd say all the letters of the little tiny file name acronym. That's, that's who I was as a youngin'. There weren't really rules back then because, you know, social media, socialization in general on the internet was limited. I mean, it wasn't as wild as it was in the, the 80s, you know, where it's just these little chat interfaces. Oh, that's the guy in full color, no longer a shadow. We'll have to see what he's all about. He's probably going to be our friend. Almost definitely. <clears throat> yeah, back when the internet was young, you didn't really communicate that easily. We had message boards. When public internet was young, I should say. Um, easy to access public internet. Uh, we had message boards and we had chat rooms and, you know... There were ways to communicate, but it wasn't like... I mean, it seems like these days, entry-level internet is Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Instagram, Reddit, um, you know, it seems like you're connected before you even actually get on the internet proper, uh, unless you're also a kid and your parents are in the smart and keep you off of the internet, social media and all that nonsense. Uh, all right, that guy has cool hair, and uh, that probably means he's going to be our very best friend. As I said, so just so that we make the best first impression, let's heal up. Whew, okay, we can do this. Sabin sent you, right? Who are you? Sabin, is he here? You were shadowing us earlier, right? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Doesn't matter who you are, I will not surrender. Woe is the day you met me. It'll be the last day of your lives. Ah, uh, they kept the name Ipu. I always liked that. Uh, are you going to steal? Ooh, a high potion. Nice. Uh, use that, uh, let's use Noise Blaster. Let's see if that works. Notice we can't target Vargas there. Also, Vargas, look at badass. Oh, I guess the noise blaster doesn't work. We'll switch to the outro grass battle. Gale cut, this is about to fucking hurt. Oh god, Terra, still be alive, please. Thank you. Okay, good. One hit poo down. Couldn't steal again. Well, you got one of them on. If, um... I ever start a story and don't finish it here, and you actually give a shit, uh, feel free to ask me to continue the story. Um, come on! What's the matter? In the comments below. Uh, because I'm just lost my train of thought. It's not like a... Yes, you did it! Oh, you mensch. Not like I'm trying to not finish the story. No. Because I record these as I go. Ah, see, now we can hit Vargas because the dudes are out of the way. Let's see if we can steal from them. A potion. That's probably not the best steal we could have gotten, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I just get distracted 
and lose my train of thought. It's not like I'm going off a script here. So if I do start a story, because I record these, you know, individually, I will record them and I'll put them up. Um, I will probably see your requests. It's not like uh, you know, let's players who record in bulk a bunch of sessions and then you, know, you gotta catch up to them or whatever. Yeah, I felt like a little combo. That was kind of nice. Um, I think the only thing that I would improve uh, in any of these motions if I made them today is I think they'd have like ready stances. Like, not, instead of just standing there, they'd be like, come on, what's the matter? They'd like bob a little bit, you know what I mean? They'd be animated. Enough! Off with you now! That doesn't sound good. Give it up, Vargas. So, you've come, Sabin. Why, Vargas? Why did you kill Master Duncan? Your own father? The fool snubbed me, his only son. He chose you as his successor. That's not true. Our master... You lie. It's written all over your face. He wanted you to be his successor, not me. He knew you had the most potential. Enough of your lies. Now, have a taste of my superior technique. Mortal attack, blizzard fist! Oh, that's probably bad. Ah, Sabin. The master taught you well. I guess there's no avoiding this. Fate made us train together, and fate will send you to your doom. Oh, we're gonna beat this boy up. We're gonna have to fight him, so what we wanna do here, I don't really wanna dawdle, is we're gonna do a blitz. Blitzes, oh, he's got the doom fist. I tire of this. Prepare to join your beloved master. It's hard to see, but there's numbers behind our little name there. When one of those numbers hit zero, we're dead. So, blitzes are kind of like combos in a fighting game. I just did a raising, raging fist. What the? He already taught you that? If only you hadn't been in such a rush for power. We got him. Save him. Big brother? Ah, the brothers are reunited. Year is brother? At first glance, I thought he was some bodybuilding bear who'd strayed from his gym. Bodybuilding bear? <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Anyway, brother, what are you doing here? We're on our way to the Saban Mountains. To the Returner's hideout, no doubt. I've been watching from afar, hoping that the world might regain some sanity. At this rate, I was afraid Figaro would be reduced to a puppet state. Our time to strike back has arrived. The Empire is going to pay for what it has done. I'm no longer their lapdog. You think a bear like me could help you in your fight? You join us, Saban? I think Duncan would rest easier if he knew his disciple played a part in bringing peace to the world. Well then, let's get going. And what the smart thing to do here uh, would most definitely be to got a tent there. Climb out and go to the other side of the mountains and continue the story. But, like I said, it's the little touches. So, let's keep walking. Let's put Sabin out front. We've been looking at uh, Edgar for a while. Sabin's level 11. Let's check him out here. Oh, good attack. Good stuff. Let's get him some equipment. Nice. Give him a buckler. That's good. Um, <clears throat> let's remove... Oh, that takes us to the relics. Nice. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that metal knuckle. Iron knuckles that put extra weight behind a punch. And our remedy there uh, cures all status ailments except for zombie and KO. Okay, so make sure he gets that back. Um, 
save. It's got blitzes, uh, raging fist, uh, pummel away at an enemy with a flurry of fists. So you actually have to push these buttons to make the techniques go. Uh, or a cannon, uh, well, holy bolt of energy at one enemy, and meteor suplex, I believe. Um, suplex is fine. I don't know why we had to add the meteor, but whatever. Suplex an enemy into the ground. X, Y, down, up, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> don't look at the buttons when you do that one. Alright. Uh, I'm probably going to sprint through this area. Now that we've got... Yeah, it's just more of a chance for lack to steal, so... X, Y, down, up. Meteor suplex. Okay, we missed. Cool. Uh, well, let's use Poisana. Not usually an opportunity to use that. And, you know, I don't even know if I know what it looks like. Oh, yeah, okay, I remember that. Um, can we do Orbolt? Or whatever the fuck it's called now. No. So that might be something I need to fix on my controller input. Because I don't currently have diagonals enabled. <clears throat> So let's just attack. Um, so now we're starting to see that different characters can have different weapons. Uh, Locke and Terra and Edgar all kind of use the same thing, although Edgar can use spears and Locke and Terra can't. Um, Sabin uses claws uh, for his martial arts training. Let's hustle. Let the muscle hustle. Ho, 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 ho. Going, 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 going. E okay, got to fight. A lot of Sabin's better blitzes involve... Uh, the diagonal, so I maybe not this time around, um, but definitely the next time I start a session of recording, we'll have to fix that so that he can uh, show off some of his cooler abilities. There are shorthand tricks around it, so maybe let's see if those work next fight. And this is a decent move for us to get some of those uh, levels that I'm, I'm sorely missing out on here. No, nope, that didn't work. So actually, let's leave Edgar Poison. Um, sleep, as you remember, didn't carry over into the next fight. Uh, but Poison will. Poison's a bad status. So Edgar's hit points are at 187, let's take a few steps, screen does that, his hit points are at 169. That sucks. So let's use the antidote. Oh, not on her. Everyone's HP doing okay, Locke could use some healing. Yeah, fuck it. Cool, okay. Okay. Oof. Yeah, sure, steal something, Blitz. Uh, no, not items. Outro crossbow. Yep, yeah, still can't use that aura bolt, huh? Okay. It fixed it now, but the second I hit the menu button, it um, cancels the recording. Uh, I don't know if I like stand that up again. Edgar got hit with poison again, and they can die from that. There's suplex. Nice. Oh. And if you walk long enough and they don't, uh, you don't heal them, um, they will succumb to the poison and perish. So, let's see here. Another fight. Mm, how low is Edgar's hit points now? Ooh, 49. Ooh, gross. You, this is a whole big bunch. Uh, on a crossbow. Uh, attack instead of stealing. Let's get some restoratives going.
Yeah, the fight against Vargas, it wasn't that bad. Like, I wouldn't call it, like, touch and go or anything, but we still could have done a lot better against him. There was a lot of healing that had to happen and, you know, care that needed to be taken. Oh, we got a gold needle. That's good. Let's get here somewhere safe. I believe Sabin's Tent is very similar to Locke's, and we're going to see Sabin's Tent again soon, I'm sure. So, let's go into items. Let's see, Gold Needle. Cures Petrification. Let's back out so Locke is actually on the map. And let's actually sit in the save point. There we go. Uh, tent time. Let's see what Locke's tent looks like. Oh, it's kind of orangey-yellow. It's got a red crescent moon on top. That's neat. That is not what I thought his tent looked like. Live and learn, I suppose. Let's get Sabin back out front. Let's get Locke uh, down at the bottom there. Or Terra. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Well, let's save. Since we beat Vargas, we've got saving. And hey, we've got all this money now. Check that out. We should go do a little shopping. Maybe get those relics we talked about. <clears throat> the fights are not as bad through here, if I recall correctly. Nope, still nothing. Okay. We'll also get a chance to steal those uh, bandanas again. Bandana, I believe, is what we were trying to steal from those karate dudes. These karate dudes right here. Go on, Lock. I believe in you. I'm not subjecting all this. So now we have a final, uh, we finally have a full party. Um, Saban, like his brother, uh, he doesn't need MP for his attacks. Um, they just require those button commands to be entered. So the risk there is that you fuck up the button command. Uh, the deal with Edgar is that you need to buy them. So there's, you know, there's that initial gold cost, the gill cost, to get um, Edgar up to snuff. Although it comes with the auto crossbow, and, and let's be honest, that's the good one. Like, we run into too much stuff that's poison elemental. Um, and watching their HP tick away is nice, but we are blowing shit up. We don't need to worry about, um, you know, killing them off afterward. We are strong. Heartache to heartache we stand. I love this sky. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, a certain kind of weather growing up. Uh, and it's probably partially to do with when I played the game, you know what was going on. You know, you kind of are connected to those days. Yeah, let's just fight him. Maybe give Locke a chance to steal. Nope. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, your, your memories are tied to different experiences, different sensory experiences. So a lot of the time, I really remember how a day felt, or what smells I was experiencing, or how the air felt around me, um, when it's connected to old memories like that. Oh no, Gore. Gonna get taken off of YouTube. Is that joke still funny? Is that joke ever funny? Yeah, this just reminds me of um, those kind of late summer days where it was really rainy, but the sun was still, you know, pretty bright. So you'd get exactly those kind of clouds in the sky, those really dark, thick ones. Oh, 
and that was what I played these games to a lot of the time. Was um, okay. That's another problem with Saban's uh, abilities is that they're going to hit who they hit. You can't target them. So if you're up against multiple people, like I haven't been using um, Suplex when we're up against the Trillium because I guess it doesn't work on them. At least that one missed, and that's more than enough for me. Belmodar! So when you're up against a Belmodar, though, and you're confident he can be suplexed. So we're here for one specific thing. Let's scurry across town for it. Is there a bridge here? Yes, there is. More secrets that you didn't know about Final Fantasy VI. You know, you know some of you don't know shit about Final Fantasy VI, so... Alright, check this out. Sabin, where's Vargas? Where's my husband? Master was... Vargas turned on him. He's... He's... Oh, Vargas, why would you do such a thing? Fortunately, my husband taught his most secret techniques to you. I'm sure he'd have no regrets. For ten years, you've treated me like a son. I'm eternally grateful. There we go. That's a little scene you don't get unless you take Saban to talk to... Uh, Mrs. Duncan. And we got it, because we went all the way back here and we did the thing. And you got to see it, because uh, I knew to do that. So really we're just here to uh, go to the Relic Store, although I guess we can see if there's anything here Saban would like. Uh, he's got... can't use a heavy shield. I could grab another plumed hat. Let's go ahead and do that. I don't think there's any weapons he can use. No. So. We can at least uh, make sure he's properly attired in terms of headgear. Good increase to his defense and magic defense. Very nice. And let's go to the relic store. Three silver spectacles and three star pendants. Should we get a knight's code? Let's get a knight's code. Okay. So we're gonna want to put that knight's code on Saban. And I'm just gonna give everyone a star pendant. Uh, except for luck. Sorry, Lark. Uh, we haven't run into anybody who has blind magic yet, or status effects, so I'm not too worried about that. I wonder if Shadow's still in here. We'll check the pub. Let's go ahead and get a rest of the inn. It'll cost us a little gill, but... Oh, it's only 80. That's much cheaper than a tent. Everybody runs up in there. We split apart. We all go to our each beds. Have a little nap. Nice. <clears throat> no, Shadow is gone. Shadow has moved on. So we talk to this guy now, maybe? No, still can't talk to him. Does this guy say anything different? I'm so sorry to hear about Duncan. That's so fucking cool. That guy at the counter! Hey, where'd he go? Oh, I love it. Isn't that great? Yeah, like, that's... These are little touches, guys. This is what I'm fucking talking about, viewer. Okay, well. Let's... You daddly doodle. Let's head back. 
I think we could have maybe stayed at Saban's house and it would have been just fine, but... 80 gold is not that much. We're gonna kill this Unseelie. These Unseelies, I guess. And get exactly that money back. And then some. And we got a potion. See? Already making return on it. <clears throat> Back up through the mountain we go. Super fast speed. We don't need to look for items. So it should be just as easy as the trip in. <clears throat> One thing I will say for modern games is that a lot of RPGs, um, be they action RPGs or like more traditional ones, uh, will, once you've beaten an area, give you like a shortcut through it. Or a <clears throat> quick way back out. Which would have been nice, so that instead of going through this, you know, mountain three times, we would have only had done it twice. Or we could have not done it at all. And then we would have missed out on a cool scene between Saban and Duncan's wife, where he explains things to her. But that's kind of cool. Like, can you imagine yourself being really wrapped up in it? And you find out, you know, you remember you going to town, and you're like, oh man, there's Duncan's wife. Okay, he's Saban's master, I guess. He trains a bunch of students. And then you get up there, and you find out that Vargas has killed Duncan. And you, your little mind, or your in-depth mind, or whatever kind of mind you got, is just like, oh, we need to, we need to let her know. You are rewarded for doing that. You get a little cutscene where, you know, Saban is very grateful toward her, and he breaks the bad news to her. You are the responsible party. You have agency over that. It's just a small little touch. It doesn't need to be there. It was, in fact, a little bit of a pain in the ass to do it. But, uh, we did it, and it was nice, and it made me feel good. And I'm just, I'm just glad it's there. Little things like this. See about that, that bolt. Or a cannon! Oh, we got it off! Oh, I'm just bad, okay. I ain't gotta fix shit. Bam, Hadouken. Or Kamehameha. If you're Dragon Ball. I'm not. I was. I grew up on the Street Fighter. Uh, to wit, Saban does indeed look like Guile's color palette swap of blue. Although he's kind of like wearing genie pants. I dig that. They're loose and flowy, you know, so he can practice his martial arts in them easily. Let's see if I can get the technique for this down. Or cannon. We're doing it again. All right. I kind of got to roll my thumb a bit. Press real hard. Nice. Loot. Could you steal for us, Lock? Yeah. I like also how the monsters can often be themed around the location. A lot of times they're not, let's be frank. Also, check out this fucking the parallax smoke there over top of everything else. That was pretty cool, huh? No, 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 attack, auto crossbow. Um, so we're in a mountain, so of course we're fighting birds. That makes sense to be up in a mountain. Uh, weird plant life, that makes sense to be up in a mountain. I don't know so much about mammoths. Um, but, uh, and then inside the caves are former students of Duncan, who have defected and are now following Arcus. Gotta beat them too. Terry and Saban both gaining levels. Good to see where we're sitting. 12s and 11s. That's much closer to where I like to be. I feel a lot more comfortable with those tools. Let's see Saban's tent. I am almost positive it's the same as Edgar's. I only have one tent left, so wherever we go next, we should buy some tents. And yeah, they're the same as Edgar's. Uh, I want to say that most characters... Um, that there's only... That most characters share a tent with one other character. I, I think there are some exceptions to that. There are, by the way, 14 playable characters in this game. 
that's a lot, I know. Um, one of the things about Final Fantasy VI is that there's no main character. Uh, that was probably stupid of me, because he's probably not going to hit the Mammoth. going to try to suplex the bird. Oh no, he got it! Cool. Bam, good call. And it's fucking dead. So no, no gore. <clears throat> um... Yeah, there's not really a main character. There's there's characters you control solo sometimes. There's characters that have to be in your party during certain story segments. Obviously, we're still in the process of gathering uh, characters up. But for a majority of the game, you can take whoever the hell you want with you. Yep, fuck that one up. That's the risk with saving. So, you know, if you're a big fan of Saban, if you like his little combo mechanic, you can use him through most of the rest of the game. If you like Edgar's auto crossbow, you can make it a priority to have Edgar in your party. If you think Terra's cool, use her magic. Sometimes Saban's um, claw punches look like kicks. But I think that's cool, because he does martial arts. Look at that money we're raking in. We start our own empire after this shit. Guess Dahl's got it wrong. What are you doing with magic and magitech? You just need to be out here punching trees. Minecraft style. Oh, yay, main touch missed. I think that should kill everyone. No. Mm. Oh, we already stole my block. That one was my fault, but I'm still blaming you. Hey, getting levels up. Leveling up. Gotta love levels. Leveling up. Uh, pay attention next time we get in a battle. Remember, everybody jumps in differently. Um, and we'll get an exciting opportunity to see how Saban jumps in. And if you haven't noticed already, how Edgar jumps in. Neat. All different. All unique. Special people in their own way. Yeah, or a cannon. Probably dead. In big move. Totally dead. Look at all that damage. It's crazy. Alright. We made it back down the other side of the mountain. We are now in the Saber Mountain Range. We're gonna go up this way. Because it's the only fucking way to go. a couple of unseely. Cool, good job, Locke. Stole a potion. Nice. Hmm, okay. So, we're gonna do... Let's go ahead and get... No, we don't need tents. Um... Why did I do that? What a great question. Uh, let's get you some silver specs. Let's get you some silver specs. Oh, obviously, that's why the poison attacks missed. Um, because they had the... The star pendants on it. Uh, let's save here. Nice, nice, nice.
the Returner's hideout. King Edgar, this way, please. I'm saving, actually, but um, thank you nonetheless. Okie doke. Bannon, we brought the girl with us. Is this the girl who reacted with the Esper? Esper? Seems the Empire had complete control over her. Carrier Pigeon's brought word that she wiped out 50 of the Empire's best soldiers in a few minutes. No, that, that can't be true. Terra. Bannon, for heaven's sake, she doesn't remember anything. Hiding from the truth won't change it. Perhaps you've heard this story. Once, when people were pure and innocent, there was a box they were told never to open. But one man went and opened it anyway. He unleashed all the evils of the world. Envy, greed, pride, violence, control. All that was left in the box was a single ray of light. We now confront those evils, and you are that last ray of light, our only hope. Bannon. Please excuse me, I'm so tired. Let me rest for a while. So I like this, and there's some themes here that I didn't really notice until I got older. Um, you know, when I was young, it was more like, uh, wow, Bannon's a cool guy. He really cares about leading this organization. But what you have is like a sliding scale of desire, uh, need. Um, three different, very different perspectives on how Terra should decide to help. Um, we have Locke, who outright tells her, I am not going to tell you what to do. You have to make your own choices. Um, this is this is your thing. Locke, who also seems to care the most about Tara's feelings as a person and less about her role in, you know, potentially turning around this war and helping the Returners. Uh, we have Edgar, who definitely gives a shit about Tara's feelings, but also understands what an asset she would be, which I think is really good characterization for him as a king, as somebody who needs to get shit done, but also care about his people. Um, and then we have Bannon, who doesn't, he's just met Terra. All he knows of Terra is the same thing em the Empire knows of Terra, is that she's a powerful weapon. Um, and he's kind of, not quite manipulative, I don't want to say, but he doesn't have time for her personal stake in things, or to know her as a person. He just needs to see the right thing done, and will do what he has to do to get her to see his side of things. I think that's very interesting, um, that a character you're supposed to be friends with, that you, your people work for, essentially, uh, is kind of a dick, like, and not in the fun way, just kind of like, well, you know, exactly how Bannon was just then. Um, I like that. I like that even as an adult, that I can find new spores of interest in this game. And it's not just this translation. Uh, I recently watched a Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI with the original translation. It was it was the Final Fantasy III that we got in America in the 90s. So that's just how Bannon is, and his characterization remains that way. Um, while we're standing here, I want to talk about music. The song that's playing right now, very similar to the Overworld theme. The Overworld theme is often called Terrace Theme. Um, like, officially, it's called Terrace Theme. But uh, this one, I believe, is called Awakenings. And it's more... It's the theme that plays more when Terra has decisions to make. And the scene is focusing on her mentally. I like that each character has their own very prominent leitmotif. I feel like it brings... It, it informs you of their energy in a time before voice acting. Um, and you'll notice when certain characters show up, like when Shadow was at the uh, the pub 
he had his own little twangy, mysterious theme playing that halfway between cowboy and samurai. Um, so yeah, music is good, and character motivations are good, and let's explore some more of all of both of those. The Empire took away someone important from me. I've hated them ever since. I joined the Returners when I realized the Empire's rot at the core. I wanted to make a difference. But I have no one significant in my life. No family or friends. That's not entirely true. Besides, I'm sure there are people who feel you're important to them. They're counting on you. Oh, he's just going to say the same thing again. I felt like he was going to do something different. Get a phoenix down here. That's nice. We're going to do some exploring, looking for items in the such. <clears throat> hmm. This guy's got some gear. There's our sprint shoes. Let's get a couple of tents while we're here. Three should be fine. Uh, I don't really need the. Oh wow, they sell. Oh, those are tinctures from the original game. They're ethers now. Uh, so, like the the language of high potions, and um, I have to imagine they're high ethers. Uh, didn't show up until seven, or at least it wasn't standardized until then. Um, so we had some different names for stuff, and a tincture is what an ether was, or ether. That's fine too. If you're fine. Say words how you want. Don't criticize people. Just means they learned the words by reading and not by hearing them. The Empire's attacking and killing returners everywhere. We have to discover some means of fighting back, or... Oh, green chair. That's good. That cures the imp status condition. I don't know what to tell you, but I do know that I trust my brother completely. He's always been fair and honest with me, even ever since we were kids. You can trust him too, Terra. But don't you dare tell him I said that. Uh, down here, I think this is interesting too, there's a little inn. Um, I don't know what reason you would need it for, I guess if you wanted to grind up some levels before proceeding. Um, that guy just tells us to how much the inn stay is. <laughs> Stand still. It's kind of tough asking so much of you. If we push too hard and force our ideals on you, we're no different than the Empire. So we want you to make up your own mind. There again is all this characterization I was talking about. Can we go down here? No. <clears throat> And it's subtle. The script was not that complicated, you know. It there's only so many lines in a game like this. But I like what they did with it. I feel like they accomplished a lot with what they had, um, in a way that a lot of RPGs don't do with more. Please join us in our battle. Get an air knife. That sounds cool. Phoenix down. It's always good. A knight's coat. Oh, we got one. We didn't need to buy it. Antidote, ether. White cape. White capes are awesome. We are going to, in fact, let's go ahead and equip that shit. It's a relic on Terra. Instead of the Gigas gloves. Look at that. Defense way up. Magic defense way up. Magic block up. Very good. Did we see... Does it have a description? Let's remove it. Let's go look at the description. We picked up some items here. Um, air knife. Knife imbued to the power of wind. That's a lock weapon. Uh, we've got... Just the white cape, huh? Uh, flowing white silk cape that prevent... Prevents Imp in Silence. So, yeah, that's cool too. Um, now Terra is immune to Imp status and Silence status, which is very good for her as a mage. I feel like there was a 
passage over here. I want to say this is a secret door, but now I don't remember. Oh well. Okay, so we're going to do a little trick. Shabannon, he went outside a moment ago. Have you made a decision? Will you become our last ray of hope? I see. So we're going to walk in here and we're going to think about it for a bit. You know, we talked to everybody. They were meant to convince us that we should fight. I understand your unease, but even as we speak, innocent lives are being lost. Please, we need your abilities. This relic will keep you safe. Receive the Genji Glove. We truly need your help. So, if you turn Bannon down three times, um, a cutscene starts when you walk back in. Uh, I think we get part of that cutscene regardless, so I won't spoil it for you guys. But um, that's when you get the Genji Glove. Uh, usually if you just say yes to Bannon, um, he gives you a gauntlet. And the gauntlet is okay, uh, lets you hold a weapon in two hands, and thus increases his attack power. The Genji Glove lets you equip two separate weapons. I think that's cooler. So we can go back out here to Bannon. We can decide to become his last ray of hope. You will. Really. But I'm scared. If everyone works together, we'll be successful. Never give up hope. I have a plan. Please get everyone together in the main hall. Ah, I forgot to do a thing. Goofy, tiny, weird shit. Um, right in the screen where Bannon is stepping now, there's uh, an item you can interact with. And it says there's a piece of paper on the ground. And you can, uh, it says, do you throw it away? You can either choose to throw it away, and you'll walk over to that little pot there and toss the paper away. It's a great way to lead you to the green cherry, although why you've been tapping on that counter, I'm not sure. Uh, if you don't throw it away, when Bannon comes in right here and he's looking down, he gets pissed off that there's a piece of paper left laying on the ground, and he throws it away. That shit has nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> it's, it's not... It adds nothing to anything. It's just a neat little detail, a funny little thing you can do, a reward for clicking around. And I think that's awesome. Also, can we talk about that countertop right there in the lower right? How it goes directly into the cave wall. That is so fucking cool. Right. We all know that the Empire is using magic power in battle. The point is, how has the Empire Emperor created, created it? I had Locke look into the rumor that the Empire is forcing the world's finest scholars to study Asperts. All the trouble in Narsh is over in Esper too. You mean there's some connection between Espers and Magitek? Espers and Magitek? Only one possible link comes to mind. You don't mean. Indeed. The ancient war of the Magi. No, oh, it can't be. My grandma used to tell me bedtime stories. Could they have been true? Would that ancient tragedy be playing out once again? It's just speculation. But historical studies have provided a number of conflicting and frightening theories. According to one theory, humans were imbued with powers drained from espers. So that's what magic power is. So the only way to fight the empires with the power of magic ourselves. No. That's how the War of the Magi is said to have started. Well, then what do we do? Perhaps we could communicate with an Esper. With an Esper? It's risky, but if we could get Terra to react with the Esper again, it might just awaken. Now, I wonder if that's wise. Who can say? Regardless, we need Terra's help. Terra. I'll do it. I'm not entirely sure I understand the plan, but what the hey, sounds like fun. What was that? That noise just now. Emergency! Sir Bannon! This is South Figaro! What's going on? What happened? 
Empire took South Figaro. Coming this way. Oh. They found us. We're having a moment to lose. Look. I know. Someone has to sneak into South Figaro and slow the Empire down, right? This is right up your alley. Good luck. Uh, Tara, please wait for me. And please, don't let a lecherous young king who shall remain nameless near you. Lock! <laughs> Big brother, aren't you ever going to grow up? What are we going to do? We'll escape down Leith River and make our way to Nash. I want to see that aspect for myself. Right. There's a raft by the back entrance. It's a gamble, but we're fresh out of options. You're in danger here. Come with us to Nash. You'll probably even gain some understanding of your own abilities. We've no time to dilly-dally. Let's make for Nash. So, where we are right now is here. Oh, cool. Return. Counting on you to protect Bannon. Nice. Um, you may notice Locke is out of our party. We have Bannon now. Who's listed as a priest? That's interesting. He's got a Punisher, Magus Hat, Silk Robe. Does he have any relics? Oh, no, that does the same. Not actually going to equip the. Um, Genji glove on anyone right yet. Um, so I missed one little tidbit with a piece of paper, which is funny because it's like one of my favorites, and I was thinking as I was walking around there I should poke at it. But, uh, uh, Belmodar and Mu. Oh, see, we get to see Mu. That's cool. Um, I'm just going to attack. This is not, I'm not really worried about this. We can't steal anymore, so. Uh, Bannon's ability is Prey. And what that does, if he gets it off, no, we crit. That bell motor is fucking dead. Uh, it heals everyone, which is within the context of Final Fantasy VI. I don't see how that's any different from magic, but whatever. Anyway, little tidbit. So say you decide you want to be big dick fancy pants and sneak back into South Figaro yourself. <gasps> what is that? Oh God, I thought <laughs> that's funny. Uh, there's a really, really hard enemy um, that is Imperial uh, later in the game, and, and you run into him um, in various places where you're not allowed to go. He's so stupid difficult. Um, and I thought when that battle started, as I hit the button to talk to the soldier, that it was that enemy, and we were going to have to fucking run. But no. Scum, your returners. Hey, chases us off. So we can't go that way. So you gotta head forward. Little details. And the paper thing, while neat, is not... It, it's kind of weird, honestly. Why Why do we do that? Why is there a paper? Uh, we also should put Bannon in the back row, because he is a squish man. So the less damage he can take, the better. And he sucks, basically. That Punisher is just a stick. It's a rod. It's not powerful. He is not strong. He's in his fucking pajamas. Um, got a cool profile picture, though. Look at that. Wow. The wild hair. Okay. Uh, there's nothing up that way. I'll go ahead and show you. I mean, you could just believe me, but... I think it's interesting that it keeps going up there. Like, entirely unnecessary. Um, let's stay at the end. Why not? Oh, we get to take a nap. There's not even a price for it. We need to get to Nosh without delay. We can't dilly dally. 
But first, let's take a little trip back to the mountains, you know, just to see what's going on there and sleep for six hours. I wonder if the paper's still there. No, it's not. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. This here's Leith River. Here we go. This raft will take us to Nosh. Let's hop on board. Head toward Narsh, but protect Bannon at all costs. If Bannon is put out of commission, your journey's over. Uh, what that basically means is if he gets KO'd, we're, we're dead. With you, you lose. You have to restart from your last save. Uh, these are cool nautiloids, exocytes. Prey. Prey doesn't cost MP. Prey is just, he just does it. It's just a Bannon thing. It's nice, frankly. It's one of those abilities I wish you could have more in the game. Um, you can perhaps tell by the fact that he's not, we didn't get to name him, that he doesn't stick around. But, uh, like Bix and Wedge. Or Biggs and Wedge. Yes, Biggs. Vix, he's what he was called in the original um, translation. Uh, so this is kind of cool. It says which way, and you get to pick which way you go. And uh, you get to, it'll spin you around in circles and go different ways through the rapids. I believe the correct path here is left. Uh, there's an exploit at the next one that, I think it's the next one, that if you held your uh, controller button down or had like a rapid fire controller and you left the game on overnight, um, it would just grind you through there, and you would get a shit ton of levels. And remember what I said about um, about how if you die, uh, you get to keep all your experience. So say you leave the game on overnight, you set your cursor to memory, have Bannon use health, have everybody else just attack, Edgar use out a crossbow. Um, even if you did die when you wake up in the morning, you're going to have a crap ton of experience when you start over back in your last save. But you don't really need to do that. Like, this game has its hard parts. It's got its tense parts. And I, I like, I enjoy that I've been a little panicked, you know, with Locke fighting the the guy in Narsh with the Moogles. And, um, oh, Bannon gained a level. Maybe he will be a little less dead. Uh, and the fight against Vargas a little bit. Um, it's been nice that, you know, there's been a little tension there. Uh, we're actually coming up on the first gut check boss, I guess you can say. Up until now, it's been kind of cakewalky. I, I don't even think the bosses have died like bosses do yet. I think they've all had kind of weird death animations, or just the regular one, like that guy where he fades to pink. Ooh, Terra learned a new spell called Drain. Uh, what that does is it um, summons a giant shower drain and uh, sweeps your enemies down into it. And this is a video game, so that could actually be what it does, but it's not. Go ahead and cast it. A little damage to the enemy gives Terra a little healing. I do not know a situation in which that spell is actually, like, useful. Why you would want to use MP on that spell, as opposed to... Cure or fire or it's, like, it's got to be violently situational. Save and gain the level. Good. Yep, we took the right path, so we're gonna come in here to a save point. Um, I think we're all doing okay on the hit points. Terra's got good magic points. Yeah, Bannon's level nine. Woof. Okay. But this is just another cool area. Like, you're on autopilot, you're not doing anything... You know, you're not super in control of your commands or anything. You still fight wandering monsters. It's just a little different, you know? Final Fantasy VI has a lot of that, a lot of areas that you traverse through differently uh, than you might ordinarily. 
I don't think I put that both in right. Oh no, okay, it's okay. And of course the background, the water is still rushing. You know, you've got that animation in there. It just, it's, it's neat. I like it. Hey, which way? I believe here's where we can go left. I think that's where the, the exploit is because up is the default cursor position. So. These creatures are called Lesser Lopros. I wonder if there's like a Lopros or a Greater Lopros. If you attached a GoPro to a Lopros, would you have a GoPro Lopros? These are the questions of Plague Mankind. I'm not sure what Wing did there. It hit Terra, but nothing seems to have happened. It might have been one of those weird phantom status effects. There's a way to check on those, but I forget exactly how. Yep, here we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, we already got rid of that. Oh, where's your white cape? Oh, got unequipped somehow. Um... Let's leave it on her. Code, that's fine. You got silver specs, that's cool. Uh, everybody's pretty close to full health. Terra's a little further off from full magic, so let's let's back out. Let's check out Terra's tent. She has a little pink tent with a red bow. Nice. Little blinkies as she wakes up. Let's walk around as Bannon. No, that seems like a terrible idea. I think maybe the top person gets hit more often. Maybe not. Maybe that's an old Final Fantasy thing, but why take risks? Okay. No way to go but forward. We have a nice preemptive strike here. Hit the other one. Ah, you bastard. Actually. Nope, didn't work. Not going to be using a lot of aura bolts, I don't think. I think I'm not starting from a down position hard enough. More levels for Bannon is only a good thing. A good strong Bannon. This is kind of cool. Hey, what have we got here? <laughs> Game over. Don't tease the octopus, kids. Right, I'll smack Bannon right away. Who the fuck is this guy? Is the other crossbow better? Let's check. Ouch! The seafood soup! So, he did that in response to me casting fire magic. Because he's weak to fire. Okay, auto crossbow is doing 261 damage. You delicious morsel, and you're just my type. <laughs> Let me get my bib. Ooh, look at that damage. Holy shit. Okay, we're back up now. Thank you, Ben. A bitch about seafood soup again. Um, ink also blinds. Blind status reduces your accuracy, but we've got those silver spectacles on, so no, no blindness for us. Muscle heads, hate them! Oof. So much fucking damage, wow. Yeah, I remember being stuck on this boss fight a lot when I was a kid, too.
I don't want to say stuck. Stuck implies that I didn't know what to do. I was just... Not good. I also thought the blind status meant something. In the original game, it was um, bugged. Uh, a bunch of your stats were bugged. Uh, the patched version is supposed to fix all that. Um, ooh, this one's gonna hurt. Thank, thank you, Prey. Um, so he would do his little blind attack and it wouldn't do shit. So I was always scared to prompt it from her. You know, because he'd attack Terra and she doesn't have that many hit points. But, uh, and if I can matter, use fire. Burn a little faster. And now I've got the silver spectacle, so, you know, you can use it there too. Oh, there he goes. That, that's all French! I guess we thrashed it. Don't bet on it. It's probably just hiding from us. Ew. Something stuck to my leg. Terra, get away from there. It's all right now. Hey darn freak, I'm gonna smash it with a blitz. Now, Saban, out of my way, brother. Oh, he's always been a tad zealous. Saban? It'll be fine. Are you sure he's okay, Bannon? You should know better than any of us. Any moment he'll flop up right back onto the raft. What the? Seems you missed the onto the raft part. Haha. <laughs> Sabin! Sabin! Take care of yourself! Sabin! Off he goes. He's fucking dead. The end. I'm kidding, of course. Edgar and Terra race toward Narsh while protecting Bannon. But what about Sabin, who was swallowed by the raging waters? And. How is Locke faring after having penetrated the Empire's defenses in South Figaro? Is all going according to plan? Choose a scenario. Koopa. So we're a little Mog right now. Um, our friend Mog, actually. You'll notice his equipment is empty. We can't change his equipment here unlike we could earlier. There's a reason for that. It's, it's technical, and I don't fully understand it, but basically characters uh, who were the Moogles were actually taking places of the character slots of characters you get later in the game. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so there's ten of those. You already had two, so that's your main cast. Um, kind of a weird preview. But uh, because we removed Mog's equipment, it's empty now. But this is another one of my favorite parts of this game. Possibly my absolute favorite part of this game. We get to choose a scenario. Um, and we have any option here. We have to go through all three of them. Um, we can go in any order. And if I was a lot cooler... Hmm, if I was a lot cooler, I would let you guys decide. Um, but I want to keep playing the game. So I tell you what, let's do the easy one. Um, get it over with, get it out of the way. And that's this one here. Obviously we have three party members. That makes it way easier. It's also the shortest one. Fleeing the Empire's troops, Bannon, Edgar, and Terra ride the rapids toward Narsh. But the going won't be easy. There's a chance we can get through another fight. Yep, there is. Sometimes you can get through that one. Attack here. Switch to the auto crossbow because we don't have saving. But yeah, how cool is that? That you your party splits up. Again, this game doesn't have a main character, technically. There's three, you could argue, are really close to being the main character, but even then. Um, so you have your choice. You get to do whatever works best for, for you, whatever you think is the most interesting. And that was just like mesmerizing when I was a kid, that, that when I had that option, 
that the story could kind of go my way, and I could decide which leg I wanted to take first. So this is where our little draft trip came out. Um, I don't know if you can see on the world map down there, but uh, if you look down and to the right, there's a little white dot. That's basically the returner's hideout. Um, I, I'm not going to draw on the screen, so I'm not going to bother pinpointing it for you. Uh, but from our red dot position, if you go down, there's two little white dots, one to the left of us and one to the right of us. The one on the right is where the returner's hideout was. Um, so. You can see kind of how that body of water took us up where we are now. And where we are now... ...is back around where there are leaf bunnies. So we're not going to get much from grinding up through here. Um, that's Narsh. You guys want to see some secrets? You guys want to see some little tidbits? Let's go look at some little tidbits. Uh, first of all, um, and this is going to be obvious, gotta fight some dark winds. You know, who doesn't just fight dark winds all the time? Someone who doesn't have a leafer population. Dark winds and leafer. Are they wearing little collars? That dark one looked like it was wearing a little spiked collar. So that white dot we're approaching on the mini-map there would be Figaro. It's not there. Of course not. It's sunk into the sand. Also cool thing, the Chocobo stable is a white dot on the map. That's pretty neat. I don't know if that was always the case. Or if that's part of the the hack, the patch, as it were. Ah, there's one of the commands we heard about. Stop. Terra's glowing pink, therefore she's affected by stop magic. What stop is, it's it's paralysis. It's She can't do anything. Um, eventually it wears off, or you die. One of the two. So, this is the cave to South Figaro. And you're gonna attack that side of it by a single leaf bunny. You know what? This, this is Bannon's time to shine. Kill it. He hit him with his weird stick. Eight experience points. You did it, Bannon. That was all you. From the back row, even. Aha! Uh -huh. That's what I figured. Same Imperial. Calling a scum, chasing us off. And I believe we have a patch that fixed this. Um, but let's check it out just for shits and giggles. A couple levels aren't bad, you know? If we were just walking back and forth, grinding up encounters, that'd be boring. But there are fights on the way to do stuff. Okay, so we're going to change to Bannon, and now we're Bannon, so you're running around, isn't that cool? Doesn't that make you excited? We're going to go in here and we're going to get on a chocobo for 100 yell. Let's do it. Ooh, oh, oh no, they fixed it! Cool! Um, in the original game, uh, Bannon's sprite is all fucked up when he tries to ride the chocobo, because they didn't expect for you to try to do that. It uses just like garbage sprite data. Um, he's got the equivalent sprites, I think, sort of, but it just wasn't put together correctly or something. Where am I? I'm going to Narsh. I lost my way. No, here it is. Oh, yeah, there we go. And you get to hear the little Chocobo song. Alright. Come on, let's just head right into Narsh. Go talk to our friend. Hey lady, didn't you just bust in here wearing Magitek armor? Wait a sec. Get out of here. If you don't... Oh, we just knocked the shit out of Bannon. 
Hold on, I'm King Edgar of Figaro. Liar. Okay, all right. Just punch the king. My goodness. That kind of attitude is deadly. They won't even listen to us. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Of course, we know it's not all her fault. Let's get in here. Let's get a drink. Kind of nice to walk around as Bannon, you know. When Locke first helped me, he filled with something right around here. Knowing him, there's probably some secret switch in this rock wall. And so there was. So here we are again. Same enemies. Same scenery. <clears throat> you can kind of explore these cliffside areas again. Cool shit. Look at how that's built right into the mountain. There's a little bridge. Can't quite get across. There's a guy over there. These are some parts we didn't get to explore earlier. Locke just kind of took us through. Uh, a Valor. Hmm. He's new. And a Wild Rat. Not a Were Rat. Was it not a Were Rat in the first place? Almost positive it was. That's That, that was kind of weird. Yeah, because they were like, they had a different name for the, the wrench guys too. Bannon should really be praying. There's a lot of thumping and jumping around. That's my cat. I have cat aggro. She is very invested in getting some snugs right now, but I'm a busy dude at the moment, so... Okay. You are making this recording a pain in the ass, sweetums. I don't even have any cheese or anything. Let me be. Goodness. What's that? I think this is a security checkpoint. If we follow the light exactly, we'll probably be okay. If we make a mistake, the light will surround us. To proceed safely, we must tag the glimmering red light. Which is sort of... Oh, I'm always bad at remembering this pattern. And I was fighting a cat just a second ago. Did I do it right? I did it right. Cool. A little ring of light surrounds you, and there's a bigger, like, orangey one you're supposed to hit A on. It spins around you. Um, or you have to fight a monster and go back to the beginning. I see they patched up the cave where Terra fell through. Now we continue to walk through that way, or we can check out what's down in this door. Oh... It's the place where we were earlier. And this... Moogles. Koopo! 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 They all say Koopo, except for the guy standing still. Koopo. Oh! That's what he said. So this is where the Moogles live. This is where they came from to save us. They did not have to go that far. Makes sense that they heard Terra falling. Do do. Let's go ahead and get this. A Rune Edge. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Sword that draws MP from its wielder to deal criticals. That's cool. Do we have any more rare items? No. Okay. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. I want to say there was another item down this way somewhere. Hmm, guess not. Yeah, I don't know where else it would be. 
whatever. So, I told you last episode that we'd be coming back through here. Oh no, because there's were rats. Their palettes are so similar. I guess it's just something that's a little harder to fight. I don't know if that was added in by a by the patch or what. Uh, but I said we'd get these treasures later. Now is later. Um, they will improve again way later. But at that point, it's not that much more worth it. So we get a sleeping bag here. That's pretty good. This is one of those places where the fights are a little annoying um, because the frequency is pretty regular since the first time you go through here it's an early part of the game and they kind of want to let you practice the controls. You get a phoenix down there, that's always nice. I can't remember what they were before, something not as good. <clears throat> And they're easy fights, so it's not like, you know, you gotta think or do tactics. You just kind of hit them. I always thought this area looked like a squirrel. Like I'm in the body right now, and the, the other part of the save point is, is its tail. Uh, I have tried to make Narsh and the Narsh Caves in Minecraft. The Narsh Caves are not very well organized. There's a lot of questionable arrangement there. It's easy enough to assume those little doorway tunnels go further than they look, but... Aha, uh -huh, remember this? This is where we got spotted by the people, the Narsh Guards. Let's just go ahead and uh, do that. And that again. Mm -hmm. No reason. No reason at all. Only that we're here. Back where we started. Uh, this guy's name is Arvis. No one ever tells us that. It's just finally given here. I forget what his voice is. Uh, Bannon, King Edgar, Terra. Arvis, how do things stand here at Narsh? Same as always, the town's neutral. I've tried to get the people to side with the Returners, but it's no use. Of course, maybe with you here and the King of Figaro. How are the townspeople doing? After seeing the Esper in the coal mine, everyone's become uneasy. I like that characterization from Edgar. First thing he asks, how are the people doing? We believe this young woman is our only hope of reaching out to that Esper. Now the townspeople are really curious about the Esper as well. Uh, maybe Terra can help restore some order to our town? That Esper is either going to save us or dig us an early grave. See, I told you that was quick. Choose a scenario. Goodbye. We go and save. Another log save, that's it. This one's going to take a little longer. You know what? I'm going to be a cool guy about this. I'm going to let you guys decide. Um, vote in the comments, if you don't mind. Uh, I know we don't usually get a lot of comments in the videos anyway, so if I don't see anything... I'll make my own decision next time I sit down and play, but, um, yeah, which of these scenarios would you like to see us, uh, take on next? Should we follow Sabin as he tumbles down the raging river, or should we see what's going on with Locke and his infiltration of South Figaro? The choice is yours, and yours alone. 
I'll see you guys next time. White out.